Hello friends, welcome to my channel, Homeopathy Super Sessions by Dr. Jagos. Today I'll be telling you about the LM potency because I've got many requests from many people to make a PowerPoint or to make a video on LM potency. So I've divided this into many parts because I'm getting requests that the videos are too long to see. So I have divided it into many parts so that you all can uh, see it and also understand it properly. So let us see about the introduction, what LN potency has to say, the first part. A homeopath should have a deep knowledge of the fourth and fifth edition of the organon to understand the homeopathy of the 1840s, which is found in the sixth edition. So basically you have to be familiar with what has been mentioned about posology or what has been mentioned about the scale on the fifth and the fifth of, of the fourth and the fifth edition of organon. And homeopathy is commonly practiced today is based on single dry dose wait and watch method of the first chronic disease in 1828 and of the fourth organon edition in 1829. So generally nowadays we are giving a single dry dose and we are giving the method of wait and watch. In this method, a single pellet dose of the centricel potency is used as long as the patient is improving, even in the slightest manner. So what are we doing? We are administering one the single dose of the medicine in the, in the centricel scale, which was introduced by Dr. Henneman in the fifth edition of Organon. And as long as the patient goes on improving, we do not, we do not interfere and we allow the medicine to completely exhaust action or unfold itself to the maximum level. So many of the many of the great 19th century homeopaths like Kent were masters of this method. So our great personality, Dr. J.T. Kent, he was a master of this method in the centesimal scale. And he all, as you all know, he was a high potency prescriber. He always prescribed high potencies and he was very successful in getting very really good results. The dry dose may only be repeated when there's a different relapse of the old symptoms calling for repetition. So Dr. Henneman has told us that a single dose, dry dose, you give on the centesimal scale, as long as it is acting, you do not interfere with the medicine. But as long as the medicine acting, do not interfere, but moment the symptoms which have disappeared under the action of the first medicine they again reappear. That is the only indication for repetition. So therefore, I've written that it must be repeated when there's a definite relapse of the old symptoms calling for repetition. Okay, so whatever symptoms have disappeared after giving the first dose and they have again reappeared, that is the only time for repetition. Otherwise, you do not repeat. Hanneman was not completely comfortable with this method in cases that only showed slow improvement over a longer period of time. So in this method of using the centesimal scale, giving one dose, waiting and watching, a lot of time was taken. No doubt improvement took place, but it took place over a long period of time. So Dr. Henneman wasn't very comfortable or he wasn't very happy because the time taken to cure the disease was very long. In the fifth, in the fifth edition of Organon, he suggested any striking progressive improvement, I repeat, striking progressive improvement produce the repetition of the remedy because the cure is already taking place at the fastest possible rate. So as long as the improvement is striking, as long as it is progressive, you do not repeat the medicine. At the same time, he taught that the single dose was not sufficient for those cases that slowly improve over a period of weeks to months. So therefore, Hanneman also said that this one dose, what you are giving at the first instance, no doubt improvement is taking place, but it is very slow from periods of weeks to months. So therefore the cure took place at a, at a long stretch of interval of time. And this Dr. Hanneman wasn't very comfortable because he thought the period of cure 
would definitely be diminished if we would repeat the medicine. In the year 1840, Dr. Hanneman began to introduce his new LM potency into clinical practice. So in 1840, Dr. Hanneman started a new scale, that is the 50 millisiemens scale of the LM potency into clinical practice. The discovery of the new 1 is to 50,000 dilution ratio introduced a new potency system with unique medical quality. So out here, the dilution ratio was 1 is to 50,000 and Dr. Hanneman had introduced a new potency which had unique medicinal qualities. From the year 1840 to 1843, he used both the centesimal as well as the LM potencies. Thus, 50 millisimal scale was introduced by Dr. Hanneman in the sixth edition of Organ of Medicine, Apple 270 to 272. So, if you read Apple 270 to 272 along with the long footnotes which have been mentioned out here. It will give you a fairly good idea of what the 50 millisimal scale is, how to prepare it, how to administer it, and so on and so forth. Interestingly, the name was given by a French physician, Dr. Perry Schmidt of Geneva, far back in 1837. In this method, the material part of the medicine is said to be decreased by 50,000 times for each degree of dynamization. Hence the name 50, symbol, 50 millisimal potency. And even himself termed this new method as the renewed dynamization method. So that's all for the first part. I've kept it short because there were many requests from many people to make, a, to make short videos so that they can at least see the whole video and able to understand it instead of making a video of one hour or one and a half hours, it becomes very tiresome to the people watching it and they will, may not watch the full video. So please do please, please do please uh, tune for more. Part two is coming up. And please do like, share, comment, and subscribe to my YouTube channel. Thank you very much.